last couple of classes we have looked at p n junctions. A p n junction is a two terminal device, you have one terminal on the p and one terminal on the n and it is a single junction that is the interface between p and n. Today we are going to start looking at transistors. A transistor is a three terminal and two junction device when we mean a junction here we mean a pn junction so that you have two pn junctions in the device the name transistor comes from the term transfer resistance this means that the current through two terminals can be controlled by controlling the current or the voltage through other two terminals. controlled by either the current I or the voltage through the other two terminals. When we look at examples of transistors, this point will be made clear. A transistor can also act as an amplifier. in that you can take a small signal between a pair of terminals and then amplify it so that the output signal between another pair of terminals is higher. So, we will first start by looking at bipolar junction transistors. So, we will first start by looking at BJT which is your bipolar junction transistor. From there, we will move on to field effect transistors. And then finally, a specific type of field effect transistor called a MOSFET, a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Conductor FET. So, we will start with the BJT, then go on to FET and then MOSFETs. So, we will spend most of the time looking at MOSFETs because MOSFETs are what are used in the current IC industry, but we will talk about the other two to form the basis of understanding MOSFETs. So, let us start by looking at a bipolar junction transistor. So, we will first start with an example of a PNP device. So, you have three regions, you have two of them are P type and then you have a central region that is N type. So, we have a PNP transistor. So, there are three differently doped regions in this transistor. 
the first region is called the emitter it is usually heavily doped in this case it is heavily doped p plus we then have a base the base here is n type is p and p so n type the base usually has a lesser thickness compared to the other two regions and then finally we have a collector in this case the collector is also p type and it usually has a larger width or a larger thickness than the other two regions so if i were to so show a schematic of a pnp transistor i have an emitter region that is p plus i have a base region that is n and i have a collector region that is p so i'll mark this e to mean the emitter this is your base that is the collector so we have two junctions one junction between the emitter and the base one junction between the base and the collector and you have three terminals so this makes your transistor a three terminal two junction device so if you look at the two junctions the first junction is your p plus n which is your emitter base so the p region is heavily doped so the depletion width is almost entirely in the base you also have the junction between the base and the collector which is a simple p and n in this case the depletion region is in both the base and the collector so is in the base and the collector so there are various configurations in the case of a pnp transistor how we connect these different terminals the first configuration we are going to look at is called a common base in this case the base is common between both the emitter and the collector so let me draw the electronic uh, the configuration for the common base so this is the base you have an emitter and you have a collector so the emitter base junction is forward biased and the collector base junction is reverse biased this is c so this is the emitter base junction that's forward biased and then you have the collector base junction so in this particular example 
V C B is greater than V E B. So, let me just write down this is forward biased. and this is reverse biased. We can also define three currents, one is an emitter current I E, then you have a base current and then finally, you have a collector current. So, how does a PNP transistor work? Let me again draw a schematic of the transistor. In this, I will also mark the depletion regions. Let me just redraw this. So, I have three regions, the emitter, the base and the collector. So, the emitter is P plus, the base is N and the collector is P. So, the emitter base junction, you have a P plus and an N. So, the depletion width is almost entirely on the base side. On the other hand, in the base and the collector, the depletion width is in both regions. So, you have two junctions which is why you have two depletion regions. So, we have the emitter current, we have the base current and you have the collector current. The emitter base junction is forward biased. So, we have holes that are injected from the emitter into the base. So, these holes then go through the base where they are minority carriers because the base is n type, but the width of the base region is very small. Some of these holes can get recombined. So, they form the base current, but a majority of the holes go through the base and then they go to the collector which is reverse biased. So, you have holes that go through the base and they form your collector current. So, we have a base uh, an emitter current that is because of the injection of holes. Some of these holes recombine in the base region, they form the base current and the remaining holes that go from the base to the collector constitute the collector current. In the case of a bipolar junction transistor, we can define a current gain Another name for it is also the current transfer ratio. So, it is nothing but the ratio of the collector current to the emitter current. Now, in an ideal case, if no holes are lost in the base due to recombination, this current gain should be equal to 1. So, this is if it is ideal and there is no base current, but usually some of the holes will always be lost in the base due to recombination. So, this current gain typically is around 
also be up to 0 0.999. So, the current gain depends upon the thickness of the base region. So, typically we want a very thin base. So, not many holes are lost due to recombination. Instead of a PNP, if you had an NPN transistor, the argument is entirely the same except that here you have injection of electrons instead of holes. The transistor action here arises because there is a net power gain because we said that V B C which is your base collector voltage is higher than V E B which is your emitter base voltage. So, if you looked at the net power, power is nothing but the voltage into the current. So, you have I C, see that is greater than the emitter V B E. So, you have a net power gain. your transistor. So, in this particular mode, we operated the BJT in a common base configuration. Let us look at one more configuration. We will look at a configuration where we have the emitter being set as common. So, now you have your bipolar junction transistor, but it is in common emitter mode. So, if I redraw this and just for example, I will choose an NPN transistor instead of a PNP. So, in this particular case, I have an emitter that is N plus, that is my emitter. I have a thin base region that is P type and then I have a collector that is n type. So, in this particular case, I have the emitter base to be forward biased. and I have the collector base So, in this particular case, I have the emitter and the base to be forward biased and I have the collector and the emitter because it is a common emitter mode to be reverse biased. So, in this particular case, I B which is the base current is your input. and I C which is the collector current is the output. In a common emitter configuration, it is easy to see how your transistor acts as an amplifier. The base current is typically very small while the collector current is much larger, it is almost equal to the emitter current. So, you are taking a very small current and then amplifying it 
into the collector current so that your transistor works as an amplifier. So, it takes the small base current and gives out a larger collector current. So, a bipolar junction device is essentially a current control device so you can say that the current from the emitter to the collector so i e and i c are controlled by your base current but overall it is a current control device the next thing we are going to look at is your field effect transistor. We are going to look at a junction field effect transistor. So, we are going to look at a junction field effect transistor. call it J FET. So, both the J FET and the MOSFET which is what we look after this are voltage control devices. So, let me draw a schematic of a JFET. Remember once again we need two p n junctions, we also need two terminals. So, in this case I start off with an n type material. I have two heavily doped p type materials or p type layers within this n. So, both of these are heavily doped P. So, I am going to call them P plus. So, because they are heavily doped and you have a P and N, you have a P and junction and the depletion width is almost entirely on the N side. So, if I were to draw my depletion region. So, the dotted line represents the depletion region. And between the depletion region, you have an end channel. So, we can again define three terminals. You have one that is called a source you have one that is connected to the P plus, it is called your gate and then you have a drain. So, let me just mark it here as drain. So, you have a source, you have a drain and then you have a gate. A more practical way the device will look, I will just draw that. So, I have a P region within that P region I define an N region and then again I have another region which is heavily P plus. So, we can define three terminals usually there is 
an oxide layer on top so if your material is silicon which is almost always the case your oxide is sio2 so we can form the three uh, terminals one is your source then you have a gate gate is here and then you have your drain so the shaded regions essentially mean metal so that you have a good contact with your semiconductor so i will just say a metal contact once again in this device you have two depletion regions so you have two junctions one between the p plus and the n one between the n and the p so that you have two depletion regions and you have an n channel so this schematic represents more of how the actual device will look this particular diagram is something that i'm using in order to explain the functioning of a jfet so we will use this to explain how the current and voltage behavior works but please keep in mind that a more practical device will have a different schematic so we will consider the behavior of a jfet so once again you have a current between a source and the drain and this current will depend upon the voltage that is applied at the gate so that is your transistor action where the current between two terminals depends upon the voltage or the current between the other terminals so let us first look at the current between the source and the drain when your gate is short circuited so let me redraw the schematic of the device so you have a source and you have a drain this is my drain that's my source i have my two p regions this is n so i have my two p regions so that i have my two depletion regions and then i have my n channel so we are going to apply a bias between the source and the drain so i will bias the drain positive with respect to the source let me call this vds and this is greater than 0 which means the drain is biased positive with respect to the source so that electrons can move from the source to the drain so electrons can move and this constitutes your current we will also set the gate at a zero potential so that vgs is zero so the gate is at zero potential so as we start to increase this value which is your drain and source voltage we are going to have a current we keep on increasing the value there is going to be more current but if you look at the two junctions as we increase the value of the drain source voltage there is going to be narrowing of the n channel 
this is because this drain is reverse biased with respect to the gate. So, that as V d s increases, there will be narrowing of the end channel towards the drain. narrowing of the end channel towards the drain. So, I will just show that schematically on the same figure. So, that if you looked at the channel, the channel is wider near the source and starts to narrow near the drain. If we increase the value of V d s further, there is going to be further narrowing until both the depletion regions meet, in which case we will have a pinch off region. We can show that schematically on the same plot. So, that your end channel has essentially pinched off here at high values of V d s. When pinch off occurs, the current through this device essentially becomes a constant, because it depends upon the resistance of this end channel. This is again assuming we have a pinch off region that is small in width. So, when once pinch off occurs, the current I between the drain and the source, so I will call it I d s becomes a constant. So, we can plot an I v characteristics for this uh, J FET and if we do that, I have current, so I d s which is the current between the drain and the source versus V d s, which is again the voltage between the drain and the source. Right now, I am shorting the gate, so that the gate and the source voltage is 0. So, as you increase the voltage, initially your current starts to rise, because you have electrons going from the source to the drain, but as the current starts to rise and as the voltage increases, the width of the channel will also decrease and ultimately you will have pinch off and when that occurs, the current is a constant. So, your I d s initially increases until pinch off occurs and then your current is a constant. So, this value where your pinch off essentially occurs is your saturation. And this plot is when your gate and source are shorted. So, that there is no bias between the gate and the source. So, what will happen? We now have a bias between the gate and the source. So, let me redraw this and introduce a bias between the gate and the source. So, again I have my n region. I have my two p regions, that is my drain, that is the source and the drain is positively biased with respect to the source. And now, I am going to bias the gate 
negative with respect to the source V G S. So, when we do this, we now again you have a depletion region but if you look at the gate and the source, the gate is reverse biased with respect to the source, so that the depletion region is higher or in other words the channel is narrower. So, once you have a bias the end channel becomes narrow and if we keep on increasing this value the channel will become narrower and narrower. What this means is that if you plot your I V characteristics you are going to find that pinch off becomes easier higher this voltage between the gate and the source. So, V were to plot this, so this is for V G S equal to 0. If you have another value V G S is minus 2 volts, once again your current for saturation is lower because you have a narrower channel and also the saturation occurs earlier. If you increase the voltage even more. So, V G S is minus 4 volts, the current will again go down and saturation also occurs earlier. So, in this particular case which is your J FET, you have a situation where the current between the source and the drain which depends upon the width of the end channel is affected by the voltage between the gate the gate and the source V G S. So, higher that voltage smaller is the width of the channel and then lower is the current. So, this is again an example for transistor action where the current between two terminals is affected by the voltage between the other terminals. This is an example of a J FET, so where you already have a channel that is created within the material. The next thing we are going to look at is a MOSFET, so we have a metal oxide semiconductor which creates your end channel. So, the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors are what that are commonly used in the current microfabrication industry. So, before we understand MOSFETs, let us just look at the metal oxide and semiconductor junction and see how we form the channel in that particular case. So, right now we will only look at this part, once we understood that we will put it together in order to look at the MOSFET. So, consider a parallel plate capacitor formed between two metals. So, you have metal 1 and you have another metal plate. and then you apply a potential so between the two metals you have an insulator so this insulator could be air or vacuum or it could be an oxide layer or some other layer which acts as an insulator so you have two metal plates connected to a potential in this case you have positive charge on one plate and negative charge on the other. So, this acts as a capacitor and since these are metals the charges will reside on the surface. So, 
So, let me first take this device or let me take this arrangement and replace one of the metals with a p type semiconductor. Then I have a metal, but instead of the other metal, I have a p type semiconductor. So, once again there is an insulator layer between these two, connect the metal to positive and the p type to negative. So, we have a positive charge on the surface of the metal. but the charge density in the case of a semiconductor is lower. So, we have seen this example earlier in the case of Schottky junctions. So, you have a negative charge on the semiconductor, but it is not only at the surface, but it also extends a small distance into the bulk. So, in the case of a semiconductor, we have a depletion region. and then we also have the bulk. So, within the bulk of the semiconductor, it behaves as your regular n type. So, p is equal to n a, but in the depletion region, you have less number of uh, holes less than n a. The material is still p type. So, you still have p greater than n, but the value of p is less than n a. And this is because you have biased the semiconductor negative, so that you are pulling the holes away from the semiconductor or you are pushing electrons. Now, if we keep increasing the bias, we are going to get more negative charge in the semiconductor and you are going to find that at one particular point the number of electrons will be more than the number of holes. So, that you create a region where you have n type conductivity as opposed to p type. This thing is called inversion. So, let me just draw that again. So, once again I have a metal I am going to draw my semiconductor slightly bigger, so I can show the different regions. That is my p type. So, I have the bulk of the semiconductor, this is the bulk. I have a depletion region, where the semiconductor is still p type, but the concentration of holes is less than n a. So, I have a depletion region. And then finally, I have a region which is closer to the surface, where I have more electrons than holes. So, that I have inversion. So, in the bulk, I have p equal to n a that is in the bulk. In the depletion region, I have p greater than n. So, that it is still a p type, but it is less than n a. And finally, I have an inversion region where n is greater than p. So, in the case of a p type semiconductor, I have formed an n channel by applying a negative bias to the semiconductor. So, this is the principle of your metal oxide semiconductor, which we will use in the transistor. The difference between this and JFET is that in the case of a JFET, you already had an n channel that was present, and by applying a voltage, we shrunk or decrease the width of the channel and control the current. In the case of a MOSFET, the channel is formed by applying an external potential. So,
so that the channel is not immediately there and by increasing the potential you can increase the width of the channel and control the current. So, in next class we are going to look at the working of a MOSFET. So, once again we can draw these current versus voltage characteristics. We will also look into some more detail on the formation of the depletion and the inversion regions and also calculates their widths. So, next class we will look at MOSFETs in detail.